Welcome to my DVD on one of the most exciting ways of meeting 1D4. The Shigorin, and uh, it's such a real, this has been such a pleasure to do the work for this DVD and prepare the material because this opening is so exciting. It's an opening that's been played by the more maverick grandmasters out there. So originally, if you go back maybe a decade, um, Morozevich, who's one of my heroes and uh, a lot of players' favourite grandmaster, Morozevich from Russia, he's one of the most original players in the world. And he went through a phase of playing the Shigorin in every game against the top players in the world with, with fantastic results. And then came along a little guy called Richard Rapport, who I'm sure you've heard of, another maverick in the chess world. And recently he's used the Shigorin to devastating effect. I mean, he, he's crushed from the world's top players like Aronian in no time at all in some brilliant games. And what is the Shigorin? Okay, so we're just going to introduce it here and I'll talk a bit more about the move orders a bit later on. But first of all, let me just introduce what's going to be in this DVD. And I try to simplify things as much as I can whilst not losing any of the dynamic possibilities that the opening has. And I've really broken this DVD up into three parts to make it more accessible for us and hopefully to make it easier for us to learn. I say us because I started preparing quite hard about a month ago for this DVD and I've basically went through the same process that I'm going to share with you. It took me a month to prepare the material for this and I'm going to share what I've learned in that month of hard work with you. So hopefully you'll be confident enough to play it in your own games. So it really is an opening. You play with black against D4. And first of all, you go D5. So we, we take our, our, our strike in the center of the board. And after the most common move, C4, we now play this very dynamic move, Knight to C6. And this is really the main starting point of the Shigorin. Now we will briefly touch upon ways you can play if white doesn't play c4 in this position. Uh, for example, if he plays knight c3 and we go knight c6 here, we, we'll discuss this uh, a little bit later on. But this is not critical. The critical position is after c4, which occurs in 90% of games, knight c6. And now we have a number of choices for white. Now, why knight to c6? Let me let me sell this to you for a little bit, because um, the one thing I found, and this is, you know, I'm always going to be as honest as I can with you guys, because, you know, there's no point, there's no point lying to you, because I'll get found out, and we, we don't want that to happen, do we? Is that with this move, it's one of the only openings with black where you get a development advantage and quick, spicy attacking moves against your opponents when he plays d4. Uh, often 1d4, it's really considered to be a more positional move than 1e4. And you often get long, drawn-out games which require a lot of manoeuvring and not so many tactics. Now, knight c6 already aims for a tactical battle. And it's a very counter-attacking move. Because you're basically saying, I'm going to develop my pieces as quickly as possible. Yes, I may give away control of the centre with my pawns, which we'll see how this develops in a second. But I'm going for quick piece development. Quick piece development. Pieces coming into the game at full speed. So I'm giving up one thing, my pawns in the centre, for piece development. Which means that, in actual fact, white has to be very careful. Because if white doesn't play with precision, he can often find himself on the receiving end of some vicious attacks and this has been demonstrated throughout the years. Now of course the opening Shigorin was um, named after the great Shigorin, uh, maybe one of the only players who, who is well known to prefer knights over bishops. And I must say if you play the Shigorin you, you're probably going to have to get used to giving up your bishops for the knights. This occurs in, in nearly, nearly every variation. You often give up this bishop for a developed knight on f3 and you regularly give up the dark square bishop for a knight on c3. And you do these moves to increase your, your development speed. Okay, so what three parts of this DVD have I, have I decided to split it up into? 
Well, logically, after Knight to C6, I was thinking about this position. I thought, what is most critical? And I came to the conclusion that the most obvious move for white is surely to take on d5 and force the black queen out, because this is a forcing option. So the first part of this DVD is going to look at positions where white immediately takes on d5 and forces the queen out. And this is part one of the DVD, and this is a very important part, as they all are, really. I have to say, I love these positions. You get some great attacking games here. And in this position, well, the main move is e3. It's worth pointing out already that if white plays knight to f3, a very important move now. You cannot play the Shigoring without the move e5. This is key, key move. And this is one thing, one of the typical ideas that you really, really need to get your head around. e5 is a move that has to be played in a lot of positions because it goes with the principle of the opening. The principle of the opening is don't worry about the center, develop with speed. And the move e5 liberates your bishop, attacks the center, and mainly you're just trying to get your pieces into the game quickly. So this is a very important move, and this is one of the key things I want you to remember, e5, in numerous positions. So part one, after taking on d5, and really I'm just going to give you an overview of the DVD now, as well as an introduction, so you know what's inside this DVD. Queen takes d5, e3 is going to be a more precise move. So hopefully already you know what you should play against this e3 move. Well, you're trying to play with the Shigoring as actively, quickly, aggressively as possible. That's why I love this opening. e5 is the key move. And this is the move that you, you're, you're going to first come across. These are the first, first load of games in this DVD. Concentrate on this move. And the idea behind this is to attack the center. Your bishop will often come to b4 with check. And you just get your pieces out with maximum speed to the most aggressive squares. Knight to f6, bishop to g4, create threats, fly those bishops into the game. Yeah, they're like bombers. They're coming out, dropping their bombs all over the board. And in this position, after e5, again, the first part of the DVD is going to be dealing with knight to c3. We never, unless we have to, we don't move the queen away. The normal way of meeting knight to c3 is with bishop to b4. Again, you've got to get used to this as we go on. And now, um, the most common move here is bishop d2. We look at other options as well, of course, breaking the pin. And this forces you, as black, to give up one of your bishops. Hence why I say you can't be too fond of your bishops in order to play this opening. And now there's a parting of ways. We start off by looking at bishop takes c3. Because for a while, this was meant to be the trendy refutation of the Shigorin. Black, Black is trying to fight against his bishop on c3. White does this in order at some point to open up this bishop. But now we take on d4 and the key move here, and it's already very tactical, is knight to e2. <sighs> because if white takes with a pawn on d4, he loses a lot of his potential here because this pawn's blocking the bishop. So knight to d2, e2, with the idea of taking with the knight, keeping the bishop open, is what we're concentrating on. And here we're just going to look at quick development. One of the beautiful things, like I say, was opening, which you will get used to, is that black gets a development advantage. How many openings do you get that in with black? Not many, but you do with a Shigorin. So this is uh, the first part of the DVD. We're looking at mainly these lines. So let's just go through that again. And that's after knight c6, white takes on d5, surely the most critical move because it's a capture, brings your queen out. e3, you must strike with this key move e5. You'll get used to this move. If you ever forget what to do in a Shigorin, think e5. And after knight c3, bishop b4, bishop d2 takes. Of course, we must also consider pawn takes c3 here and look at these positions. So that's basically part one of the DVD. Now, the second part of the DVD, if we go back to the position after knight c6, so I was trying to work out what would uh, the next most critical move be. I believe it to be knight to f3. And this is a very, this is played often, often, often in, in this position developing a piece, control and centre. What should you do against this move? Well, I think the most stable move here is bishop g4. And as a basic rule, remember, the bishop flies out, 
to attack either the knight on f3 or the knight on c3. Basic rule. And you want to exchange this bishop off in a number of positions and then continue with e e6 or e5. And we come to uh, um, um, the first, well, uh, uh, an instructive game in this position quite surely. But just to show you what part two of the DVD is really um, going to concentrate on. It's concentrating on this position, white now taking on d5, and now black taking on f3. And this is a very important line. White should now capture on f3 with the g-pawn. This is the only way you can try to get advantage. Of course, other moves will be considered. And now again, we do our standard plan. Queen takes d5. Slightly different to the first chapter because the bishop has been exchanged for the knight. And as I said, it's a trade-off between white's strong center, white's bishops, and black's development. Black has two pieces developed. And after e3, well, you can guess what move I'm going to be advocating most here. Surely you can guess already. How do you attack? How do you bring your pieces out? How do you force through the center? e5. And this is our, 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 main, um, our main move to play. I'm also going to be looking at the more restrained e6 move because some of you guys might want to play in a more positional manner and e6 is a good option. But e5 is clearly critical here. And again, this is what part two of the DVD is mainly concentrating on. And the last part of the DVD is going to be, if we go back to the critical position after knight c6, well, what other options does white have? We've looked at taking on d5. We looked at knight to f3. So clearly, knight to c3 is a move we need to consider. And this move, in my eyes, is, is a very good option. This is what I used to play as white against the Shigoring. And most players play pawn takes c4 here. But the talented Richard Rapport has recently been playing knight to f6 here. And this is my recommendation in part two against knight c3. And one of the main ideas here, again, just to show you some of the typical things you need to bear in mind, is that if white takes on d5, we recapture with our knight. And now let's say he brings the other knight out. Well, can you, can you possibly imagine what move I'm gonna give here and what move Richard Rapport used to crush Aronian with? e5 again this active move even if it sometimes costs a pawn we play this move to bring out our pieces with speed um other options we're going to look at um in the last part is e3 in this position a rather tame move aiming for a slow game we have a look at this and anything else you need to know so uh, that's really an overview of what this dvd is gonna go over part one part two and part three i hope i've covered everything and I, i've gone into some serious detail analysis because i i, I want to get you as prepared as possible i honestly have really enjoyed filming this dvd it's opened my eyes to some fascinating variations and i honestly can say if you want an aggressive opening against one d4 then you will not get a more aggressive opening than the beautiful Shigoring with knight to c6. And I hope by the end of this DVD, I would have warmed your heart to some beautiful ideas and to some aggressive play that hopefully you will also use to gain some very enjoyable victories. So that's my overview of the DVD. Um, we're now gonna look at some typical ideas and some other things, move order tricks, before we move on into some actual games that will demonstrate these ideas in more detail.